Welcome back everybody. If you have not yet hit the subscribe button, ring the little bell, please do so. We drop videos on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and the odd Saturday. Um, as you can see, we have decided to go with electric fence. And there's a couple pros on this one. Um, the reason why I've decided to go down this road is the ability to set it up, the ability to take it down, and also the ability to use it somewhere else on the homestead if I decide to put a permanent post up, fence up. So we're going to take you through the steps and how we basically figured out what we needed and go with the, go with the flow. So this is one of our old fences here. And as you can see, each one of these poles is a single prong pole. One pole, prong on a pole. This works extremely well if you're on hard, hard ground where the fence doesn't move. Our issue with gardening is we have to always move the fence to garden to get the weeds. So, in this one here, we've gone to a double prong pole. Now I'm gonna get stuff to come in closer because I'm not carrying this. And you can see by what I mean. It's got two prongs. Now this is designed for loose soil so it has more stability in the pole. So we spent the little extra money and we're going to give this a try. So this is basically called a turbo electric poultry net. The reason why we went this way is on the bottom portion it's smaller hold which allows us to keep the birds from getting into our garden. The other benefit of it is we also have some issues with some raccoons and skunks every now and then. So we had to go with an energizer that could run two of these fences and potentially a third one if necessary. So we bought this energizer. It's a Gallagher S200 I believe. And the reason why we bought it is A, it can handle what we want to do for our fence and the other option on the back of here gives me two settings one's for livestock and one's for animals as in um, wild animals let me rephrase that so all I have to do is set it to the wild animal phase and during the night it will go off faster instead of going off every about three seconds at night it goes off about every two seconds if i go to the animal setting like the homesteading animal setting it goes off every four to five seconds at night and during the day every three seconds so it's just a little bit more better um hit um so we spent the extra money we went to a bigger energizer the other thing with this energizer is it can handle a lot more fence and when you put two to four of these together, you need the fence. You need the electrical shock out of the energizer. So, without further ado, let's get started. We're now gonna unbox this thing. So I've already cut it open so you didn't have to see me struggle. So let's unbox it. They tie it all up very nicely. And here's an instruction booklet and some extra parts just in case. Us men don't need this, right? On the, each one of the prongs is a piece of plastic you have to remove. So this is how the net looks all tied up from factory. Looks really good. Um, we're gonna get this thing unwrapped. Halfway through the net, they did put some ties on here. So undo them. This holds the round net all together.
So one nice thing that comes, it gives you a little warning sign saying this is electric fence. The other thing it does is it gives you two carry handles right here and one down there, which you can use to carry it. Just like so. So as you can see here, I misjudged a little bit. I got a couple extra poles here, so we're gonna have to go backwards and lengthen that other side. Now you can try taking a tape measure and figuring it out, but it always seems to go not the way you plan it. And we did do that because we had all those stakes up. So while closing up the electric gate or connecting two together, you gotta tie these two together. So what I like to do is pull it tight as you can go, push it down in the ground, and you have your two ends. So I wrap this one one direction around the wires and the poles until it's pretty much tight. I take the other end and I do reverse. Just like so, and then you connect them together. Now this is very crucial because your energizer is going to be sitting on this and clamping to these two to make this whole fence hot. So as you can see, we weren't able to do it 100% square. That means one of our measurements are a little out. Um, eventually we will be staking this up by pulling it in certain areas like this to straighten it up so it doesn't look like sag down. Sag down and when we pull it tight it'll look something like this. We got to do it around on all the corners. Now to truthfully make a good fence you actually want to make sure that you have corner to corner like square and either have braces on the corners or do a pull down off of 45 like we're going to do eventually. We're not going to do it right away for the simple reason this fence stretches. So the reason why I'm getting this out early is so that it can stretch. 
and that way in about two weeks time we'll come back through re-tighten up everything and then basically it should be good to go so guys we're going to put in a t-post which our energizer is going to sit on and this is a ground rod we're just going to put it in on just far enough so that it's in the ground so i can pull it out again as long as it has a good ground that's all i care about So, inside our energizer, we have leads or wires. And before you use this thing, make sure you connect the batteries. I already did it because I've been having an outside charging. But most of the time, the grounds are off. Now, don't get yourself confused. There's a black and a red wire and a straight red wire. The black with red is ground and your straight red is your hot. These are your leads. Now, red for red, so you unscrew this, you put this on, the terminal and you tighten it back down I highly recommend having another set of these if you need them because they sometimes do go bad just like so now the reason why I put the T-post and the ground rod on the inside of the garden is this way no one can smack it and no one can really play with it. So the T-post sits on the bottom of the energizer. Right here. And that way. It sits something like that. Now, red is hot, and that means red goes to your fence, and green is ground, and that goes to the pole that goes to the ground. Now, you want the energizer to face south, always, because that's how it charges. And there we have it, our net set up. We're gonna leave it for about a week to two weeks, let it stretch out, and then we're gonna come back through and brace anywhere where like this happens in here so that we can not have a droopy portion of the fence. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Ring the little bell. We do drop videos on Tuesdays, which are more animal videos and thursdays which are gardening videos which you're seeing right now and on saturday we do drop the odd video on saturday if there's something that we need to do as a filler or to explain something more that we had questions on during the week thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day